Let me start with a show of hand. Don't worry, two very simple questions. Out there in the audience, how many of you have got a mobile? Raise your hand. <laughs> That's pretty easy. Now, second question, how many of you struggle to remember what life was like without them? Pretty, pretty, could, could foresee that, really. Mobile, whether you love it or hate it, is just part of our lives. I use it to exercise, I use it to meditate, some people use it to track their dog, believe it or not, <laughs> and some people use it to find love. <laughs> But have you ever thought about how transformational mobile truly is? This thing that I've got in my hand has got more computing power than NASA when we first went to the moon in 1969. Incredible. A 10% increase in the penetration of those things in Africa is linked to an increase in GDP of 1.2%, proven through research. 99% of Kenyans accessing the web actually do it through their mobile. M-Pesa, Vodafone's mobile payment service, now churns 47 billion euros per year. This is the same as the ninth biggest company in the UK on the FTSE. So mobile is already changing a very old sector like banking. People who never had a chance to have a a bank account before, now can store money on their mobile, can transact that money through their mobile at very low cost, they can have access to insurance services, they can borrow money, they can increase savings. But that's just the beginning. It's not just banking that mobile is changing. It's also changing healthcare, and it's also changing agriculture. And it's making a big difference to women as well. So I'm going to take you on a little trip in South Africa, Kenya, and Turkey to give you very simple examples. I've, I've had the pleasure and the, the immense pleasure of, of, of witnessing myself. And hopefully it will all make sense. First trip, we're flying to South Africa. We're in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. This is one of the most impoverished parts of South Africa. We are in a small healthcare center. The waiting rooms are absolutely crowded. People have been waiting for hours. The good news is that those people will get seen by a doctor. They will be diagnosed. But what you don't know is that actually, probably, the drugs that they need to be treated is not going to be there. Not because the government can't afford it. They can afford it. It's just an issue of stock. It's just out of stock. Come back in a week's time. So you're probably thinking, the answer is already there. You're probably thinking, well, what difference can mobile make? A very simple but transformational impact. So what we did is that we put together a very simple mobile platform that enabled nurses on a weekly basis, Thursday, if you want to ask me, to fill in their form about how much of which drugs was left in the stock. And that means that you don't wait for the stock to be depleted to start filling in papers and sending it through to the warehouse. So it means that the stock gets replenished in good time. Very simple, very, very simple. So now what difference does that make? So as you can imagine, for the guys come there, travel a couple of days to be treated, it will be treated. The nurses are ecstatic because actually they're empowered to make a difference. The Ministry of Health is getting more impact for their money. So this is very cheap indeed. And Vodafone, or Vodacom as we're called in South Africa, is fantastic for us because the Ministry of Health is now a fantastic business customer of ours. So very simple, but very transformational. Second trip. Ready? We are now in Kenya. 
We're about an hour and a half from uh, Nairobi. I visited a small dairy cooperative. So you have to imagine this is a dairy supplied by farmers like him who have between one and ten cows. The cows get milk twice a day, probably like in the rest of the planet. The milk gets transported by farm workers to the dairy cooperative. The milk gets weighed, a record taken. And this farmer, at the end of the month, go and visit the cooperative to get his payment. Sounds all simple, but actually it isn't. Massive business issues there. Because this guy and the others would argue endlessly with the cooperative about how much milk was actually being delivered. You're trying to rob me. No, I'm going to sell my milk somewhere else. I'm going to do it myself. So you think, mm, what, you know, what, again, what can we do to help? And I must say, I must admit, before visiting this project, I didn't actually get it. So I hope you do today. But I won't hold it against you if you don't. What we did is provided the, the cooperative with a mobile platform that enabled them to send a good receipt message, a text message to this farmer, as soon as the milk was received and weighed, to say, thank you, we've received your 20 litres this morning, this is that much in the bank at the end of the month. Because what was happening, what well, we don't know, what well, I didn't know before getting there, is that actually in the transportation of the milk between this guy's farm and the cooperative, the farm worker was, you know, taking a little sample. Well, now that this farm worker knows that a text message will be sent to the farmer to tell him exactly how much was received, guess what? There's no samples anymore. So very, very, very powerful, embarrassingly simple. So what this change actually it's a little text message that's changed everything about trust, business trust between those guys and the cooperative. And actually, the cooperative, I interviewed the, the director of the cooperative, and he said, this is brilliant business. I've gone from 800 farmers selling their milk to me every day to 1,800. I'm laughing all the way to the bank. This is not about saving the planet or being good, socially good. I'm making business here. This guy here who's got 10 cows is actually getting the money that's due to him at the end of the month for once. Nothing is being robbed from him. To make things even better now, what we're doing is, this guy will no longer have to travel to the cooperative at the end of the month. We are going to transfer the whole payments for the month through M-Pesa, our mobile payment service. Now, let's go to Turkey. I love my colleagues in Turkey. They're absolutely amazing. They're always looking for ways to innovate, to make money, which is great. They noticed that women didn't have access to mobile like men did. So they thought, well, how do we create a nice little mobile package that will make them come? So they did their research like they do and understood that actually women in Turkey, particularly in rural areas, wanted to do more business. They want to sell their crafts, they want to sell their goods. And they know they can do that through the equivalent of eBay in Turkey. There's an equivalent there. But maybe they didn't have the smartphone that gave them access to the internet, or they simply didn't have the confidence. So we thought, great, we're going to fix that with mobile again. So we created a special a mobile package, which has a few, you know, the usual text and call. But we also created a platform that en enabled a woman like this one who maybe didn't, wasn't confident to go on the website, the eBay, the Turkish eBay. We created a platform that enabled her to take her phone, take a picture of her craft, send a very short description, and we took care of the rest. In the first nine months, 5,000 ads were posted through mobile on the eBay, the Turkish eBay. We were extremely happy because 75,000 women signed up for that tariff, for that package, and 15% of them were actually new to Vodafone. They switch. We took our competitors' customers. We loved it. The average sale of crafts, the average value of sale of crafts through that, through that exercise totaled up to $51. So amazing again. Hopefully this shows that something very simple can really unleash you know, entrepreneurship, um, particularly in this case, with women. 
But I'm sure we've got a very, very skeptical crowd today. Something tells me that that's probably the case. You're probably thinking, I know it's amazing, and it's ubiquitous, we all have one, they all have one. So why is the world in the state that it's in? We still have half a million people dying of malaria every year. We still have 300 million fewer women having access to mobile across the world. And last but not least, we have 4 billion people officially undernourished. The worst bit is, half of them are actually smallholding farmers. So what's gone wrong? Why isn't this stuff scaling? Why isn't it scaling faster? It's actually a question I ask myself on bad days. And I've got a little theory about it, and this is only my take. Three things. My first theory is sectorial silos. Delivering this kind of solution at scale requires, it's a bit more complex, it requires to work with government, with NGOs, and a whole new set of stakeholders. And that's not given for everyone. So corporations really need to develop new skills and make a bit more of an effort. <coughs> Second of all, colonial hangover. We are still way too tempted to treat emerging market as countries that need our help. So we innovate for them. And we do come up with amazing stuff. I've seen amazing, very promising projects, promising to save the world, to failing after pilot stage, when the countries that it was destined for actually didn't want to take it, just not invented here syndrome. So please, please, corporations, innovate with, don't innovate for. And finally, probably the point I'm most passionate about, binary thinking. And I'm in the midst of it. Big corporations, the bigger, the worse it gets, are very good at two things. On the one hand, they're very happy and very good at making lots of money, generating revenue, generating profits. On the other end, they are so willing to invest money in philanthropy. Lots of it. Well targeted, well measured, transparent, accountable, the lot. It's very well done these days. What's wrong with the bit in the middle? The third space. That's the space I'm most passionate about. That space in the middle is a space where you drive revenue, you drive profit, maybe not on the scale that we are used to, but all oh, the social benefit. Now you're talking. It's completely, completely different. So I guess what I'm asking of cooperation to do a little bit more of is to be social entrepreneurs. They have the scale, they have the ability. They just need to go into that third space. And finally, I'll leave you with an image. Probably because I have two daughters, six and nine, and Play-Doh is part of my life. Play-Doh is very, very simple as a toy, really like mobile. But it's What's important is that it's an invitation to innovate. It's a challenge to innovate. And what's important is what you make out of it. The secret is in your hand. So my question to you is, what are you going to make out of it? Thank you.